Hello and welcome back to the Umbrella Academy. I am Mir Niaz. In this lecture we will discuss oxidative cleavage of alkene with hot concentrated KMnO4. Oxidative cleavage of alkene by ozonolysis. Worked examples on ozonolysis. Comparison of different hydroxylation and oxidative cleavage methods. We have seen that, in a potassium permanganate dihydroxylation under cold conditions, syndihydroxylation takes place on alkene double bond to form a glycol. However, if the solution is warm or acidic or too concentrated, oxidative cleavage of the glycol may occur. In effect, the double bond is cleaved to two carbonyl groups. The products are initially ketones and aldehydes depending on the substituents attached to double bond. That means double bonded carbon having hydrogen attached will convert into aldehydes and the one attached to two alkyl groups is converted into ketone. However, under these strong oxidizing conditions, the aldehyde is quickly oxidized to carboxylic acids. If the molecule contains a terminal double bonded methylene group, that group is oxidized all the way to CO2 and water. Thus, in these molecules, the products can be written by cleaving the double bonded carbons into carbonyl groups. Therefore, in this case, two alkyl groups are attached. Hence it will be converted into ketone. Whereas, on this side, one hydrogen is attached, which means it will be first converted to aldehyde, which will be then oxidized to carboxylic acid. In this second example, two double bonds are present and both will be oxidized. Both these double bonded carbons in the ring have hydrogen attached, which means these will be first converted into aldehydes and then oxidized to carboxylic acids. This double bonded carbon has two alkyl groups, which means it will be converted into ketone. Whereas this is methylene carbon attached to two hydrogens, it will be first converted into formaldehyde which will be then oxidized into carbon dioxide. Just like permanganate, ozone cleaves double bonds to give ketones and aldehydes. However, ozonolysis is milder, and both ketones and aldehydes can be recovered without further oxidation. Ozone is a high-energy form of oxygen, produced when ultraviolet light or an electrical discharge passes through oxygen gas. Ultraviolet light from the sun converts oxygen to ozone in the upper atmosphere. This ozone layer shields the Earth from some of the high-energy ultraviolet radiation it would otherwise receive. Ozone has 142 kJ per mole of excess energy over oxygen, and it is much more reactive. A Lewis structure of ozone shows that the central oxygen atom bears a positive charge, and each of the outer oxygen atoms bears half a negative charge. Ozone reacts with an alkene to form a cyclic compound, called a primary ozonide or molozonide, because one mole of ozone has been added. The formation can be understood by tracking the movement of electrons. Balancing the positive charge on middle oxygen by breaking weak pi bond towards it. This makes this oxygen electron deficient, which is balanced by breaking alkene pi bond towards the oxygen. This in turn creates positive charge on this alkene carbon. This is balanced by negative charge on oxygen forming molozonide. The molozonide has two peroxy linkages, so it is quite unstable. It rearranges rapidly, even at low temperatures, to form an ozonide. Again, start the electron movement by balancing the positive charge on this oxygen by breaking the pi bond towards oxygen. This creates a positive charge on carbon which is balanced by this oxygen lone pair. The electron deficiency on oxygen is balanced by weakly held pi electrons, making carbon positively charged. This is then balanced by negative charge of this oxygen. 
In this way, molozonide rearranges to ozonide. Ozonides are not very stable, and they are rarely isolated. In most cases, they are immediately reduced by a mild reducing agent, such as zinc or dimethyl sulfide. The products of this reduction are ketones and aldehydes depending on the substituents attached. To predict the products from ozonolysis of an alkene, erase the double bond and add two oxygen atoms as carbonyl groups where the double bond used to be. For example, in this case, the double bond can be broken in the middle and these products can be formed. Since hydrogen is present on both the double bonded carbon, therefore, both carbons will be oxidized to aldehyde groups. That means two acetaldehyde molecules will be formed. Consider the second example. Cyclopentene. The double bond can be erased and oxygen can be added to both carbons. In this case also, hydrogens are present on both the double bonded carbons, therefore, on both sides, aldehyde will be formed. Consider this case in the same manner as before, double bond can be erased and double bonded oxygen can be added on both the carbons. Since both double bonded carbons are having alkyl groups attached and no hydrogens, therefore, both will be oxidized into ketones. In this case, both double bonded carbons have one hydrogen attached, therefore, ozonolysis followed by reduction will convert both into aldehyde groups. In this case, two double bonds are present in cyclic six-membered ring. Both can be cleaved to add oxygen on double bonded carbons. Both the double bonds have only alkyl groups attached and no hydrogens, therefore the products formed will be ketones only. In this case, two double bonds are present, one in ring and one outside ring. Only this double bonded carbon has hydrogen attached, others have alkyl groups only. Therefore, Three carbons will be oxidized to ketones and one will be oxidized to an aldehyde. One of the most common uses of ozonolysis has been for determining the positions of double bonds in alkenes. For example, if we were uncertain of the position of the methyl group in a methylcyclopentene, the products of ozonolysis reduction would confirm the structure of the original alkene. Therefore, if we check this product formed after the ozonolysis reduction, we can see that both the carbonyl groups are attached to the same molecule, which means that it is formed from a cyclic alkene. If we count the carbons, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this means that this product is formed from the five membered cyclic ring. Since the methyl group is directly attached to the carbonyl carbon, making it ketone, therefore, in the reactant the methyl group must be directly attached to the double bonded carbon. Whereas in this case also, the product is obviously formed from a five-membered ring as both carbonyl groups are present in the same molecule. Since this is a dialdehyde, Therefore, it means the methyl group is not attached to the double bonded carbon in the reactant. Had there been any methyl attached to any of the double bond carbon, then that carbon would have been converted to ketone. Therefore, in this case, the reactant is 1 methylcyclopentene, whereas in this case, the reactant is 3 methylcyclopentene. Therefore, here both double bonded carbons are oxidized to aldehyde as they have hydrogen attached to each. Whereas, here we get aldehyde from this carbon having hydrogen attached. And this one having methyl attached is oxidized into ketone group. Consider this ozonolysis followed by reduction of an unknown alkene. It gives an equimolar mixture of cyclohexane carbaldehyde and 2-butanone.
We can determine the structure of the original alkene. We can reconstruct the alkene by removing the two oxygen atoms of the carbonyl groups and connecting the remaining carbon atoms with a double bond. One uncertainty remains, however, the original alkene might be either of two possible geometric isomers. Both permanganate and ozonolysis break the carbon-carbon double bond and replace it with carbonyl groups. In the permanganate cleavage, any aldehyde products are further oxidized to carboxylic acids. In the ozonolysis reduction procedure, the aldehyde products are generated in the dimethyl sulfide reduction step and not in the presence of ozone, and they are not oxidized. Therefore the points to remember here are When an alkene is treated with osmium tetraoxide or cold KMnO4 or MCPBA followed by acid catalyzed ring opening, the double bonded carbons are hydroxylated to form glycol. Wavy lines mean stereochemistry is not shown here. When the same alkene is treated with ozone followed by reduction with zinc or dimethyl sulfide, or treated with hot concentrated KMnO4, the double bonded carbons are oxidized into carbonyl groups. Thus in the previous case, only pi bond is oxidized and sigma bond remains intact, whereas in the later case both pi and sigma bonds are oxidized. Consider this 1-methylcyclopentene. In the presence of osmium tetroxide syndihydroxylation will take place. If hydroxyl groups are attached on the top face, then the methyl group already present will be on the bottom face. The other enantiomer will be having stereochemistry opposite to this one. The same molecule when treated with cold dilute KMnO4 gives the same syndihydroxylation enantiomeric products. Upon epoxidation followed by acid catalyzed ring opening, anti-dihydroxylation enantiomeric products will be formed. The methyl already present will take opposite stereochemistry to that of hydroxyl group on the same carbon. In the presence of warm concentrated KMnO4, both sigma and pi bond will be oxidized and the molecule will be converted into ketone and aldehyde depending on the substituent. The aldehyde is further oxidized into acid. Similarly ozonolysis followed by the reduction with dimethyl sulfide will also give the same products. That means double bonded carbons having alkyl groups only will be oxidized into ketone and that with hydrogen will be oxidized into aldehyde. Remember that in this case aldehyde is not further oxidized to acid. 